Good evening, everyone. We're a little early, but that's all good. I'll let people come on. Let people come on. Let me say good evening to the folks. Just this lighting. Because if I don't, the video is going to look so dark. And that's okay. I think it's still a little dark, but it's okay. Hello, I don't know who's online, so you got to let me know who's online so I can say hello to you personally. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm trying to set the lighting so it doesn't appear too dark in the video. Okay. What can I do? Oh, la, 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 la. I'll drink some water. Good evening. Let me know who's out there. So we could get through this. Hello, Sakila. Good evening, Rel. Good evening, my Care Bear. Good evening, Kanisha, Prophetess Janet, two other callers, Sister Sherilyn. Good evening, you guys. Good evening. <laughs> you gotta mute your mic. <laughs> Tracy, good evening. <laughs> you guys mute your mic. Okay, so I'm just giving them like three seconds there. Three more minutes. I think I'm actually on time. I'm early this year. <laughs> it's a good thing. I'm just waiting for everyone to. Hello, Marcia. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> giving people time to get on. This is a preemptive. Um, it's too dark, the video. Maybe that helps a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. That's actually better. This? No, I don't know how to do it, Ma. I just oh. leave it. <laughs> Good evening. Come on, come on, come on. Share the video, share the video. This is for the message for the new year. You guys know I get messages every year. And I always wait for the dream to com confirm it. So, I'll let y'all come on. Come on in. I got my new cup. It's for Christmas. It's from my goddaughter and my godson. Shout out to Destiny and CJ. And she said, what up? And thank you very much for your blessings. So, let us start off with a prayer while I wait for people to come on. When I wait for people to come on, we'll start off with a prayer. Praise God. Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. I bless God. I bless God. The Lord shall pre preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time, even forevermore. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shade. Amen. I bless God. I bless God. So as you guys know, every year, every year since I've been documenting it, I haven't, I never documented it before. Good evening, June. Good evening. Good evening. 
woman of God, my cousin in Jamaica, big up yourself. <laughs> so every year since 2012, I've been documenting the seasons that the Lord has given me. And every time I get a message, someone's mic is not muted. Can you guys mute your mic, please? Thank you. Um, so every time I get a message since 2012, I, I, I started writing them down. And as you guys know, I always wait for the dreams for the confirmation. And as I receive it, that's how it is. Amen. Good evening, Sister Lois in New York. Good evening. And Sister Prophetess Janet in New York. I love you. Happy New Year to you and Minister Greg. God bless you, woman of God. Um, so from 2012, 2012 was the beginning of sorrows. 2013 was the final boarding call. And many of you guys have heard me give out that message before. 2014 was the year of the promise. 2015 was the season of the giant slayer. Amen. And 2016 was let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. 2017 was the season of jubilee. 2018 was a season of divine protection. And that entire year for 2018, we fasted nonstop because God said that he has shut us into the ark. Amen. 2019 was a season of renewal and repentance. And that entire year, we did Psalms 51. Good evening, Sister Audrey. Good evening, cuz. You made it. <laughs> blessings, Prophetess Garcia. Uh, 2020 was a season of double-double blessings for those who believe. And a double-double cursing for those who do not come under his shadow. 2021 was a set time to favor Zion. Amen. And 2022, the message that I received, I believe it was three, four days ago, was um, renewal and restoration. And I said, I'm going to wait for the dream. And the dream came this morning. And I'm, I'm not going to go through the entire aspect of what I dreamt about, but I'm going to give you the main aspects within the dream that stood out. And we started off the prayer with Psalms 121 because... It is a prayer that recognizes the source of our help, the source of our deliverance is Christ Jesus. Good evening, Sister Nikki in New York. Blessings, blessings, woman of God. Thank you for all your diligent work. You constantly command our morning and you constantly keep us prayed up. Even sometimes I can't get through. I always uh, I have the confidence and the knowledge that Sister Nikki has that under control. So I give God thanks for you. For your diligent work so we're gonna go to psalms 91 and i i think i told you guys before if you read psalms 91 and you're reading it because you're fearful you already defeated the purpose but nonetheless the message that we have here is psalms 91 verse 14 and this is significant to me because we started the fasting on the 14th day and we were doing the book of matthew which consisted of different 14 generations between different episodes within the lives of the children of Israel. So the number 14 is very significant. It also represents favor. The, um, um, Psalms 91 verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him and set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Amen. That is... The fact that God hears our cry because we acknowledge him. Good evening, our songbird. Good evening, Minister Andrea. God bless you, woman of God. That is our song. Um, that is a confirmation that God hears us when we call. He is our ever-present help. Amen. I bless God. So we're going to pray. And then we're going to go into the different aspects of this street. Father God, we give you thanks and praise, Almighty God. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of our deliverance. You are the source of our strength. We honor you and we worship you. Father God, without you, we are nothing. You are the Alpha and the Omega, and we call you Abba, for you are our Father. Father God, we thank you for your holy, your holy, and your holy. As the angels cry uh, amongst, around the throne, holy, holy is the Lord. So we thank you, Almighty God, that your Son is the first begotten of the dead. We thank you for the blood sacrifice that still lives on, that is still as powerful yesterday, today, and is just as 
is powerful going forward into tomorrow. Father God, we thank you that it's only through you that we can rely and rest assured that we are moving forward according to your will. We thank you, Almighty God, that we do nothing without your presence. We do not go to the left or to the right without your Holy Spirit guiding our hand. We thank you, Almighty God, that your blood covers us in and out of season. We know that we will be lenders and not borrowers, Almighty God. We thank you for blessing our storehouses. We thank you for blessing our children, blessing our homes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you walk with us in and out of season and you know us by name. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we have a relationship with you through the blood covenant of Christ. And we thank you that you have brought your kingdom on this earthly realm. As your word says, as your kingdom comes. Almighty God, we thank you for your power, your strength, and your your presence, Almighty God, in our lives each and every day. Father God, as, as I reduce in myself, I pray that you use me as an oracle of the Most High God, and that thy Holy Spirit will speak through me, as you have spoken through me in the night vision, Almighty God, where you give mankind instructions. So, Father God, as I deliver the word unto the nations, Almighty God, I pray that they hearken unto the message and they move according to their faith and they will be blessed and blessed by the word. Almighty God, I thank you in advance for all that you do and all that you continue to do. In the name of the Most High God of Israel, I humbly pray. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. So this was an impromptuous um, teaching. So this is based on the dream that I had this morning. So in the in the morning I had a dream and there, there's certain aspects I'm going to discuss. I'm not going to go into the full dis details of it, but there's certain aspects that I will discuss. So I was in a church and um, there one of the women of the Most High, one of the servants of God, was going to go sing. She was going to go sing. And when she was going to sing, none of the mics were working. The mics started to work, but then they become, they, they stopped working. They couldn't get any sound from it. And um, the bishop came and three of his helpers came and they made adjustments and the mic came back on again. But she was in one particular gown. And then when she went back up, she was in another gown. And the other gown that she wore was of a darker color, but the, the gown was torn. It was rented apart. It was torn in two. And the, the, t the gown was torn from the lower part of your back all the way down to the back of the knees. And no one could see that it was torn, but I saw that it was torn. And I ran to her, and like when you have a dressmaker has clamps, I put the two clamps on her, on the lower part of the dress, and it sealed and she was covered again amen and she said oh thank you woman of god i said do not thank me thank god that he covers you amen and that's what we need to keep into consideration a lot of us wants to to honor like it's good to acknowledge the work of other people but the people move under the unction of the holy spirit they move under the guidance uh, and um, the willingness uh, that God leads them to. So, you know, even though the things were broken, and these are things that she needed, and the, the dress was rented apart to, to cause dishonor and disgrace, God was there to cover her, amen? So we know that from Psalms 20, 121, our help does not come from any anywhere our help comes from god he is the source of our deliverance he is the source of our help he is the source of our restoration he makes whatever is broken and um whatever is useless he's the one that recreates it and makes it into something new amen he's the one that solidifies the damaged pieces the the separated pieces in our lives he's the one that restores what was ripped away amen so i bless god i bless god i bless god for that and we're going to go in the book of isaiah 41 verses 10 and the word of the lord says fear thou not for I am with thee. Hey, Father God, I bless your holy name. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. That is confirmation. That is confirmation that you do not need to look to the left or to the right, but look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. The Lord who is mighty and all powerful, never sleeps nor slumbers. He is your ever present help. He is in the midst with you, in and out of season. No matter what you are going through, God is there to be your protection, your help, your guidance. Do not be dismayed. Do not be troubled at what you see. Do not be troubled by what you see because the hand of God is with you. Amen. The hand of God is with you and he will give you according to the measure of your faith. Amen. So stand on his word and rest assured that your help comes from him. Amen. He is the one that is covering you. He's the one that has already delivered you because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered past tense. It's already been done before you were conceived in your mother's womb. It was already taken care of. Amen. Salvation was already in the garden amen so you have to recognize that the hand of god is with you you just have to trust and hold on to his unchanging hand i bless god i bless god and within the same dream <laughs> within the same dream and everyone knows that i have a i have a love for children and many times in my dreams they want to use children to um cause problems but in this particular aspect i obtained some wisdom so the child i was sitting at the front waiting for the singing to go forward and a child came to me about the age of three three or four years old and he was in a little black pants and a red shirt uh, he was ready for church and i picked him up and i put him on my lap and he i was nestling him and hushing him like a mother would do their own child and he looked at me and he says i need a new one of this i said a new what and he said i need a new one and he said what i said what do you need and he pulled out a washcloth a face rag and it was red and he pulled it out and he said i need a new one and it was perfectly fine it was brand new but he said that he needed a new one. And I, I put him down because I was going to go get it. And there was a woman standing in a pew. You know, there's a, there's a um, not a pew, but like an altar. She was at the side and she said, oh, you thought the church was full, but there's only 39 people here. And um, I said, well, it doesn't matter to me. If there's 39, I will teach the 39. Do you understand? And when I was walking back, I realized that I didn't have my notes with me because it seems as if this was an un uh, impromptu teaching that um, the the bishop wanted me to do and I realized I had no notes with me so I'm looking for my notes so as I was going forward I was automatically in the cotton fields of Georgia I was in the cotton fields of Georgia and um, you could see seas of white and you could see the stems of um, that contains the cotton if you look it up online, you'll see how they look. There, There is like a stem, a hard stem that contains the cotton. And while I was looking at the cotton fields, there was blood falling on the white cotton. And all I heard is no one took into account the blood that was shed for this. No one took into account the lives that was lost for this. No one took in account the cost of our comfort. No one took in account the many lives that was lost. Expenses to, to, to pay for the things that we want in this life. No one took in account the price that was paid. Amen. And the Holy Spirit told me to go in the book of Mark. So I went to Mark 11. And he said the fig tree and I, I went into the, the book about the fig tree. Now in, in modern times, the figs are used for a lot of medicinal pur purposes. 
It is used to help with different forms of um, medical issues. Amen. And the fig tree in the natural, it is a tree of abundance. It is a tree that bears a lot of good fruit and it is sweet to the taste and it helps to restore the health and it provides a filling within your body. Amen. It helps if it's filled with antioxidants and it has a lot of seeds. So that means it is very fruitful. It's full of fruits. Amen. But there was a time and I'm going to read you the scripture. Mark 11, verses 20. Praise God. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up from its roots. Let me go back. Sorry, I went too far. Mark 11, verse 13. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing, nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. So what we need to realize, first of all, it wasn't the season for the fig tree to bear. So the leaves were just starting to bud forward. Okay. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. Amen. 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 And I'm going to stop right there and go over to 20. And it says, now in the morning when they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you have cursed withered away. Now, you got to recognize something. It wasn't time for figs. It wasn't time for figs. But the Lord happened to be passing by. Amen. You see, the tree represents the branches. We are the branches of the tree of life. Amen. I bless God. I bless God. We are the branches of this tree. Amen. But it wasn't seasoned. It wasn't time for the fruits to be bear to bear. It wasn't time to bring forth um figs. Good evening, man of God. But God bless you, Minister Garnett. God bless you. It wasn't a time to receive the figs. And many would say, Why would Jesus curse this tree? Many will look at the tree and say, it is not the tree's fault because it's not the season to bear fruit. Amen. But Christ saw it fit to curse the tree. <laughs> because what we need to recognize is that we must be prepared in and out of season. We must be bearing fruit for the kingdom in and out of season. Lest our Savior passes by and we have no fruit to offer him. Do you understand? You see, you cannot have a, a, a ministry, a, a business, a family that does not bear good fruit. Amen? Because the tree bears after its own kind unless the roots be corrupted. <laughs> so even though it is not seasoned, even though it is not time to bring forth fruit, you must be prepared just in case it's time for the Savior to pass by. Any branch that does not bear good fruit is cast into the fire. It is your duty as servants of God, whether it is seasoned to bear or not, to have your fruit prepared to offer unto the king so look at the work that i have produced amen <laughs> you have to be prepared to see your savior to see your savior you have to have your house must be prepared your branches must be prepared to bring forth fruit whether it is season or not <laughs> christ could have walked away and left it as is 
but we must be prepared that any given moment he will come for us and we must have fruits on our vine we must have good fruit on our tree amen so that we will be recognized as his children so when I when I when I saw in the dream the child was offering wanted to replace what was already brand new and I noticed in the dream the mics were good and functioning but yet they were not working I kept on seeing that these things are things that it's all based on appearance what it appeared to be even the tree appeared to be but God, amen. Now, the other aspect of the dream was the woman of God had this beautiful head of hair. And you know, that's your crown. That is your crown. That is where your glory. She had a beautiful head of hair, a full blown afro. And one side of the hair was tapered and neat and very thick and healthy. And the other side had a whole bunch of dead ends on it. Dead ends. Amen. Dead ends. Amen. Mighty God of Daniel. Mighty God of Daniel. And in the natural, in the natural, in the natural, when you have dead ends on your hair, you look at it and you cut them off. And some people want to hold on to those dead ends because, oh, that's the length of my hair. It, it, but it serves no purpose. Amen. Because when you have those dead ends, you know what it does? It splits all the way up the hair shaft and makes the hair strands brittle. Amen. It makes it very weak. Amen. So what we have to do is constantly cut off the dead ends so the rest of the hair can grow and be strong amen and be strong amen <laughs> so there's some things in your life uh, in order for you to move to the next level <laughs> in order for you to strengthen up yourself in the spiritual realm in order for you to develop the strength and the the richness and the, the 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 abundance that God wants to bless you with in order to receive that you need to cut off some dead ends in your life and that might be people that might be associates that might be associations but some things have to be has to be cut off so God can restore the strength, <laughs> restore you afresh. <laughs> Some people that you were associated with, you need to let them go. <laughs> Some things that are dead, let them stay dead, but let them be removed off of you. Amen. Let take them away from you. Love it from a distance. Amen. <laughs> because some ground, no matter how much you walk on it, it will never be soft. Some ground, no matter how much you plow at it, the root of it is hard. <laughs> and before you get caught up in that hardness, God said, cut it off. <laughs> cut it off <laughs> so that he could restore you and recreate you the way you're supposed to be. Amen. You see, there are mountains in our lives that will block our progress amen there are obstacles in our lives that will block our progress amen but once you choose to hold on to the unchanging hand of god the same god that you look to the hills for the same god that is a source of your strength and your deliverance once you keep your eyes on him you will not sink in that water my god and that mountain has to move <laughs> Mighty God of Daniel, mighty God of Daniel. For the Bible says in Mark, Mark 11, 23, for assuredly, he said assuredly, he said most definitely, amen. I say unto you, whosoever says to this mountain, 
to this blockage, through this wall, through this uh, employment, through this uh, financial issue, through the mortgage broker, whatever is stopping your progression. Uh, the Bible says, uh, "Be uh, if you ever say to this mountain, if you speak to your situation, be removed and cast into the sea. That's the authority that Christ brought back for you. You need to understand that. Amen. You need to understand that. Amen. I bless God. I bless God. That is the authority that the blood of the son of the living God, Mamos, Atara, has brought back for you. Amen. His blood has given you the authority to speak to your situation, speak to your body, speak to your anyone that is over you with the authority that he has brought back for you. Anything that is blocking your prosperity, blocking your deliverance, blocking your honor, blocking your progress, speak to it. Hmm. Do not speak to it as yourself, but speak to that mountain as a servant of God. Amen. Father God, I thank you. And as anyone that is connected to a royal bloodline, you do not have to do nothing but watch the angels of the Lord move on your behalf. Amen. Just like the Queen of England, she does not have to go and speak to anyone. There are people that will speak on her behalf. If she says to move, they have to listen to that bloodline. Amen. And they have to move in Jesus' name. We serve a higher king. We serve a higher king. Amen. Our help comes from God. But you need to speak to your mountain. And here is the key. Do not doubt. <laughs> if you speak to your mountain and you do not doubt. And let me tell you how the devil works because I've been through this. By the time your belief is charged up, you'll hear a voice. Just like in the dream when she said to me, oh, you thought the church was full. And there's only 39 people here. And I said, but my God is a God of multiplication. Use the words, know God for yourself. Amen. Stand on his word. Do not shift our shape because of what you see around you. The things that you see are temporal, but the things of God are eternal. Move. <laughs> Move according to the words of the God of creation, the one that lives beyond the boundaries of time. Move according to his will and know that it will be done. It says, and if be, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. Oh, bless God. He will have whatever he says. Amen. And the Bible says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. It is written. It is written. It is written. You guys, people go out to psychics, witchcraft, whatever, all their people, whatever they want to do, whatever the people tell them, they believe that it's going to happen and it does. <laughs> Who is above every principality and power? The God of creation, the God of Israel. Huh? <laughs> he is the source of our peace, our Jehovah Shalom. Amen. When the woman was telling me to look at the crowd and only saw the 39, I said, my God is a God of multiplication. Let no man limit what God can do for you. Amen. Let no man limit what God can do for you. He is our creator. He did, we did not create ourselves. It is God that created us. Is there any limit to his power? Come on, people of God. Too many people running to science for deliverance. Science ain't making it. <laughs> Jesus. 
I'm going to take you guys someplace. We're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 9. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 10. I beg your pardon. A lot of churches like to read little one-liners and make their full-blown full blown teaching based on it. And they miss some of the fruit. Amen? They miss some of the fruit. Amen? Verse 7 says, Unless I should be exalted above measure, and by the abundance of the revelation... It says, unless I be exalted above the revelation of the Almighty God. Amen. Mamos. Hey. It says, a thorn in the flesh was given unto me. Amen. There was a thorn placed in his flesh. Amen. A messenger of Satan to buffet me. <laughs> to keep me back in place. To humble me. Amen. Lest I be exalted above measure. Amen. This is Paul speaking. Of the thorn that was placed in his flesh. Amen. And verse 8 says. Concerning this thing. I pleaded with the Lord three times. Mighty God of Daniel. Mighty God of Daniel. He said I pleaded with the Lord three times. Amen. That means he's asking God to remove this thorn <laughs> that it might depart from me <laughs> you know what a thorn represents it represents discomfort it represents distress it represents pain it represents hurts <laughs> it represents suffering <laughs> But this is what God said unto Paul. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. That means his mercy and his favor. My God. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I am most gladly. I would rather boast in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities. Oh come on you need to get this. Mighty God of Daniel. You need to get this. You need to get this word. <laughs> in reproach when people reject you. You need to give God praise for when the people reject you. You need to give God praise in the midst of your sickness. In the midst of your distress and persecution, give God grace. Give God praise. For Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, the Apostle Paul, he was a Pharisee. He was a persecutor of the Christians, the people of the way. Amen. Until Christ said to Paul on the road to Damascus, mighty God of Daniel. He said, Paul, why thou persecutest me? You see, the people of God, you, me, everyone that serves the king. He takes it personally when people come after you, when people persecute you, when people pester you, when there's pestilence that he never created. He takes it personally. <laughs> when people reproach you and reject it, God takes it personally. You see, Christ died long before Paul <laughs> came on the scene. But yet Christ said to him, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> but Paul said, I am glad with my infirmities. 
Because it was only in his blindness that he was able to see the living God. <laughs> you see, when you are stricken with illness, <laughs> when your body is riddled <laughs> with all sorts of infirmities, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, amen, lupus, oh my God, my God. When your body is plagued with arthritis, amen, uh, back pain, degenerate back pain, when you are, you're suffering internally, give God praise so that he will be strengthened inside of you. Amen. Give God play, praise. Amen. When you are having issues of blood and you, you cannot see the left from the right, give God praise because in the midst of your weakness, he is strengthened in you. <laughs> We have to stop worrying about what we see. Some things look good to us. Some things look distressful to us. Something causes us pain and anxiety and uh, heartache and grief. Sometimes we're in the midst of a mourning process. Sometimes we're in the midst of grieving. And you, you're asking God, why didn't God heal them? Almighty oh, God of Daniel, why didn't God heal them? Do you understand that we serve a God uh, that grants us free will uh, to choose him uh, or to choose life? Uh, but when you're willing to give up everything uh, for the king of kings uh, to reign with him in glory when you're willing to set yourself aside and take off your torn clothes he will repair it stitch by stitch he will put he will cut off every dead end off of you to give you a new crown a bless god a bless god when you are willing to allow god to give you that cup and you choose to drink from it to release your will and let his will be done when you release when you release yourself and let God, your mountains will move. Your mountains will move. Your mountains will move. So like Paul, with the pain, with the distress, with the anger, with the heartache, he couldn't look left to right. He looked to the hills. Hey, hey, hey. He looked to the hills because that's where his help came from. Things may look good, may look strong, may look like something that we need, that's something that could help us. But God says you need a new one. You need something to change. When you see that your heart is being torn apart with disappointment, amen, due to infidelity, amen? Your heart has been rented apart from you. God will cover your disgrace. God will cover your dishonor. God will make you new again and solidify you in his love, amen? When your body is breaking down, and the doctors are saying you got only six months to live. When the doctor is saying that you will not be able to bear fruit, you tell them you serve a God. You tell them, according to the time of life, my God shall surely deliver me. And do not doubt in your heart. Amen. His hand is not too short to touch you. This is the season of restoration. Everything that was lost, everything that was destroyed, everything that was damaged, everything that was injured because of pain, suffering, molestation, rape, anything that tormented you, anything that was a thorn that causes you distress. It is your time to glorify God in the midst of your infirmities and watch God not only repair you, but make you whole completely again. As if the injury was never there. As if the thorn was never there. Stop asking God to take things away and praise him in the midst of it. That's what makes the difference. Cut off those dead ends that have been in your life. Cut off the dead ends that has been in your life so you can start again and flourish in Jesus' name. This is a season for you to allow God to be God. 
I remember there was a time in my life when the Lord spoke to me and said, do not be like Abraham's wife. <laughs> when Sarah thought that she needed to help God <laughs> by introducing Hagar, <laughs> do not be like Abraham's wife. Let God be God because he is God all by himself. He is God all by himself. And if people are around you that is not pushing you to your highest calling, cut the dead ends off. You're wondering why your life is not changing and you keep on confiding in the wrong people. Cut. It is your season to move. It is your season to progress. It is your season to love like you never loved before in your life. It is your season. Do not allow yourself to be caught bearing no fruit because you were distracted with dead ends on your vine. Cut them off. It is a pruning season. Every gardener, and I'm not into gardening, but my mom's an amazing gardener, but every gardener knows when the winter season, before the winter season comes, you cut off the dead branches off of the tree. You cut it off so that it could bear better fruit in the new season. It is your season to cut off every dead situation in your life. It is time for a change. And the only person stopping you is you. Believe and trust in God that he will surely deliver you. It may look good to you. It may look good to you. It may appear to you as this is exactly what you need. But you need a new one. You need a change. Allow God to mold you and recreate you as his own. As his own. Hmm. I bless God. I bless God. This is our season. To cut off the dead ends. May God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to go. But before I go, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. For the hearts of every single one of you. I'm going to pray. You just have to receive the word and do not doubt. And watch God's hand move. Watch God's hand move. Every thorn that you have been bearing, every distress, discomfort, every form of bitterness, everything that has poisoned you from the inside out, everything that has caused you to be suffering, hmm. cry out unto God. Cry out unto God. Hmm. I just opened the book. To the book of Daniel 9. I'm going to read verse 17 to 20. I just, I just opened the Bible. So we're going to read from verse 17, Daniel chapter 9, verses 17 to 19. And then I'll pray. Praise God. Now, therefore, O God, hear the prayer of your servant. <laughs> Now you guys need to personalize this. Mamo sataramo sitere, breath of life. Now therefore our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication. For the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. Oh my God, incline your ear and open your eyes to see the desolations in the city which is called by your name. For we do not represent our supplications before you because of our righteous deed, but because of your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people who are called by your name. Father God, do not delay. Do not delay.
for the city, the country, the people who are called by your name. I'm going to read 20 and last. Now while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of the people of Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, I'm going to continue on to verse 21. Yes, while I was speaking and praying, the man Gabriel. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this word. Whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning had caused to swift to fly swiftly, reach before me at the time of the evening, and inform me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I have come forth to give you a skill to understand. Mm -hmm. Now we just finished 21 days of the Daniel fast. I said, God is a good God. We did tomorrow will be the last day, the, the 21st day of our Daniel fast. It will be over tomorrow. And the Lord sent me to seal off the night in the book of Daniel. And the Lord said to Daniel on the first day, he didn't even complete the fast. He said, on the first day, I heard your cry. Children of God, servants of God. We are fasting, we are praying for the city, for the people, for the nation, for ourselves to cut off these dead ends and to bring us back to a wholeness in God. Amen. But while you are in the midst of your infirmity, glorify him and magnify him. Father God, we thank you for the sweetness of your words. It is sweeter than honey. It is sweeter than honey upon our lips. We thank you, almighty God, that you will restore us from everything that canker worm, that caterpillar, that palmer worm has stolen from us, almighty God, the years that they have stolen, almighty God. Father God, for every thorn that we bear in our bodies, we thank you, Almighty God, for cutting off every dead end that serves us no purpose, that has been a stumbling block before us, that has prevented us from crossing over our Jordan. We thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Almighty God, for every thorn and every thistle that we have play, been plagued with, Almighty God, because in the midst of our weakness, you are made strong in us. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are our comforter. You're the one that provides us with peace in the midst of turmoil. You provide us peace almighty god in the midst of grieving you provide us peace that passeth all understanding when we should be weeping almighty god we will we will praise you almighty god in the midst of our mourning almighty god we thank you heavenly father that in the midst of our illness almighty god we claim our healing oh we do not look on the natural things of man but we look on the eternal things of god the the things that are unseen and we moved under the authority of Christ Jesus and we call the things unseen into the scene father God you have given us power to bind and to loose therefore father God we ask you to loose every spiritual blessing that has been locked up in heavenly places father God we ask you to eliminate every stumbling block in our life father God to move every mountain that is obstructing our view uh, father God let us walk out to you and not take our eyes off of you father God we thank you in advance uh, for healing our hearts uh, those who are broken-hearted Almighty God we thank you for the spirit of forgiveness uh, we thank you Heavenly Father that we are no longer locked up in our minds uh, but we are free to serve you in spirit and in truth uh, the Bible says our transgressions and our sin and our iniquity has caused us separation 
salvation father god but through your blood covenant almighty god which is the living christ we put the spiritual blood transfusion through our bodies and we make ourselves hold again whole again through your son christ jesus we thank you heavenly father that you have blessed us with boundless blessings you have blessed our children father god you have blessed our households and our jobs father god you are our provider you are our banner that goes before us our jehovah nisi that when the enemy rises up they do not see us but they see the spirit of the living god i bless your holy name i thank you almighty god that in this season in this season you're creating a new thing although we are looking at the things in the natural and we think that it's pleasing to the eye but god you have better things in store for us father god only you only us for us to recognize the price that was paid for our comfort the price that was paid for our peace of mind the price the price that was paid for our bodies almighty god we thank you we thank you almighty god for we look to the hills that were whence cometh our help because our help comes from you almighty god you are the god of all gods you are the king of all kings and when we call upon you almighty god let not our sin separate us from you father god i pray that you blot out every transgression every transgression every transgression from our lives as far as the east is from the west and create in us a new heart create in us a new heart the bible says a broken heart and a contrite spirit you will not despise so father god we come before you almighty god with our hands open to receive your will to do your work so that you could receive good fruit from this tree even though it's not time but when you come before me almighty god you will come and receive good fruit father god we will not leave this place empty we are cutting off anything that causes no purpose in our life and we are pressing on to glory father god we thank you in advance we thank you in advance that our homes are blessed we thank you in advance that our jobs are blessed we thank you in advance that you are our jehovah jireh we thank you in advance that you are our jehovah rafa even though we may have thorns and thistles we know that you are still the same i am of david the same i am of moses and in due season according to the time of life you will rectify everything that is not of you so father god we give you thanks and we give you praise and we are going forward in 2022 under your blessing under your coverage under your protection under your guidance under your love and we honor you and we say thanks we say thanks we say thanks that every spiritual bullet that was shot against our lives you canceled it that everything that came up against us you canceled it we thank you almighty god that you give us night visions so that we can see what is coming towards us and we thank you almighty god that you have given us the authority you've given us the authority to cancel everything that is not of you and we stand flat-footed upon your word because you said upon this rock which is your word the gates of hell cannot prevail so father god we thank you in advance for all that you have done in our lives i pray almighty god that you comfort those that are mourning we i pray almighty god that you'll heal those that are in sick in their bodies father god i pray that you give them peace in their minds every spirit of anxiety and fear we nullify your purpose now in Jesus' name and wherever the altars may be that are sending out bullets towards your life in the spiritual realm i pray that they are dismantled and tear down in Jesus' name we cover it under the blood we seal your children under the living christ the covenant that supersedes everything in Jesus' name we humbly pray and we agree that it shall be done it shall be done satan cannot put his hands on our children 
it is forbidden for we are sealed under his covenant he cannot put his hand on our spouses it is forbidden because we're sealed under the covenant we give god thanks and praise that he has covered us completely and knitted together every broken part it is your turn to remove every dead end in your life it serves no purpose you cannot be in a spin cycle in and out of season going through the same thing over and over again every dead end must be cut off amen may god bless each and every one of you may his face shine upon you may the peace of the most high god be with you may the god of israel continue to hearken unto my cry and the angels that are responsible for israel hear my prayer in Jesus' name we humbly pray good night family may god bless all of you it's a new season cut off every dead end in Jesus' name restoration is yours amen good night good night family good night <laughs> praise god good night good night <laughs> Hello, my ladies. Oh, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> God is a good God, eh? God is Happy a good God. Year. Happy New Year. God bless you guys. You're looking fabulous, Shay Shay. Looking <laughs> fabulous. I love that. I love that. Newness, newness. God is good. That was based on my dream this morning. Cutting every dead end.